Hello everybody, it's Josie here. I'm going to be doing another part of my February wrap up. So I read a lot of books in February. Um, I kind of set myself a challenge that I didn't really voice at the beginning of the month. So I was trying to read 28 books. Um, I know a lot of people were trying out this challenge as well. Um, and I actually did manage to read 28. I'm <laughs> not going to go through all of them um, all in one go. I've kind of done some reviews on separate books, um, I've done some wrap ups, but I'll go through some of the ones that I want to talk about, might do another part of the wrap up, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. So these are some of the books I read in February. So I was taking part in Feminist uh, Feb, so all of the books I read were um, kind of with a bit of a feminist slant, or at least that's what I expected kind of going into the books. So that's the first thing to say. So the other thing to say is um, I've never really been a fan of audiobooks um, and I thought this month I would give it a go, particularly as I was trying to get through a lot of books and I thought that audiobook would be a good way. I walk to and from work um, and it takes me almost two hours every day so it's a nice thing to kind of just listen to the audiobook and then you can kind of knock a book off your TBR so that helped as well. But anyway, so yes, I was trying to read books that were kind of feminist slanted and I think I succeeded and I have to say it was an incredible month. I read some really, really, really good books, loads of like four and five star books. So, so yeah. So speaking of audio, let me get into the first one. Um, this one I've just, just finished and it's The Passion by Jeanette Winterson. Um, I managed to find this on audiobook in my library, which is quite cool. Um, and I really like this. I really like the audiobook as well. I might actually go back and read the physical copy at some point but it's really interesting so it's a bit weird like Janet Winterson's books generally are but you've got this blend of um a soldier's perspective fighting for Napoleon in France and then you've got the perspective of a woman in Venice and um what kind of uh, happens to her and who she falls in love with and actually these two stories then kind of intertwine and connect and it's also a it's about passion and um, how that affects people and what that actually means and passion in different ways so love sexual passion food art uh, passion for a ruler um, in in the case of Bonaparte um, Sorry, it's not Napoleon. Yeah, it's Napoleon Bonaparte, sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but she, Jeanette writes this incredibly beautiful way. So it's beautifully written, but it's also a little bit weird. Um, it makes you think. Uh, it made me quite sad in certain places. Uh, I, I kind of connected with it. So I really liked this little book. I thought it was really good. And I gave it kind of four, four and a half stars. So that was a really good one. The next one, I'll, I'll kind of knock you off on my small books, is this one over here. This is Paradise Rot by Jenny Havel. Um, Jenny is actually a, a musician, so she does like wonderfully punk rock music and she's Norwegian. Um, and this is a translated uh, version of her book. And it is just, um, oh man, I, I really like this. I love this actually. It's So it's basically about a student who comes to the UK, a Norwegian student, and it's her starting at the university and finding a place to live and her and her roommate, essentially. The story follows her moving into this old brewery um, with her roommate. Um, but again, it's so much about human emotion and interaction and about love and... Um, it's beautifully queer as well, um, and just, oh God, yeah, it, it, it's, it's such a, it, there's no, I don't want to say there's no real plot, but it's not sort of plot driven, it's about the emotion, the writing's beautiful, um, it's about these two women, how they interact, about codependency, about friendship and love, um, it's really beautiful, and I think it's one of my favourites of the year, and, and, you know, again, another four and a half, five star read, um, it's just different. And I really like that about this book. The next one is this one over here is Suicide Blonde by Darcy Steinker. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and I think it's got a little thing on the front that says it's a feminist classic. Um, this is a very cool, again, it's a bit of a weird book. So it's about the lead character who um, is in a relationship with a man who is essentially gay. Um, and then about her, so her relationship with him and kind of, again, about codependency and 
you know, trying, I guess, to be in a relationship that you shouldn't really be in. And then she goes out and she is like a carer for this woman called Pig. Um, and then Pig tells her about her daughter or the woman she thinks is her daughter and asks her to go find her daughter. Um, and then I won't say what happens there, but there's a storyline there. And it's, uh, it's, again, it's about that internal narrative we have as women. It's about insecurity. It's about what it means to be a woman. It's about sex. It's quite sexually explicit. So if that's something that you don't like, stay away from it. Um, it's about queerness. It's about identity. Um, you know, finding yourself, being who you are, um, you know, questioning who you are, questioning what you think and what your values are, um, and how you present to the world, all of that good stuff. Again, it's a really short book, but there's, I think there's a lot of themes that are explored in it and explored well. And this is another one of my favorites of the year. So again, this is like a four and a half, five star read for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I would, if you, if you can handle slightly more explicit, difficult subject matter, particularly around sex um, and sexuality and women's bodies, then definitely pick this up. It's really good. The next one is this one over here is Notes of a Crocodile by Chi Ma Jin. Um, I read her other book, um, Last Words from Mama as well. Um, that was my other wrap up. Um, and she is a queer lady. She also committed suicide, um, the author, at the age of 26. So there is a certain darkness in her narrative. Um, and this is basically about um, students um, and their interaction. And again, it's just a sort of a slice of life, really. Um, and about the main character who, again, is grappling with the fact that she is attracted to women um, and how she kind of deals with that and comes to terms with it and her kind of intense feelings um, for her partners. And then she's sort of going through a phase where she tries to kind of be straight um so it is i thought it was heartbreaking places there's places i don't know if i can find it but there's places that i've underlined of course i can't find it now but there's places where i have underlined passages it's definitely one that i'm going to read again uh it stirred up a lot of emotion for me um i really loved it again cast of female characters queer female characters and it's just is very powerful but it, it, but also there's a certain darkness and um yeah, I guess if you're playing with the emotions of depression and again codependency and need, that's a difficult to read. But I, I really, really love this. Another four and a half, five star read for me. It's a good month. Um, then the next one, speaking of a good month, <laughs> is this one over here. So this is Slow River uh, by Nicola Griffith, and. Uh, you can see this is masterworks sci-fi masterworks and i've had this one sitting around for ages and i've almost kind of been a bit terrified to read it so it's sort of a post-apocalyptic sci-fi um about these two women one is um so one woman finds herself kind of uh, bloody and and hurt injured on the side of the street basically and another woman comes past and takes her home and it's about their relationship uh, it's about um again they they this is this is queer so this is queer sci-fi classic sci-fi which is not something that there's a lot of so that's why i was interested in reading it um and oh, i love this book um it it's not so much so if you like your sci-fi kind of sci-fi heavy so if you want sort of spaceships and a lot of science fiction-y type elements this is not for you this is more about the humanity um and again what it means to be human um about the relationships about the emotions uh between these characters um and it's again it's a cast of exclusively all, mo all female characters um and about how the relationships intertwine and also because you get a lot of flashbacks to her family um so yeah, you, you, you kind of get the, this family relationships. And again, there's a trigger warning for abuse in this um, and s sexually explicit scenes. But it 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 was amazing. I loved it. And this has kind of made me want to read. It took me on a bit of a sci-fi reading bend as well. I wanted to read more post-apocalyptic. I wanted to read more sci-fi after I read this. I really loved it. Um, so this is another four and a half, five star read for me. Um, this is getting to be a habit. Although, wait, I've got one that wasn't. So, 
then like I said I went on a bit of I was like oh I want to read more sci-fi I want to read more um post-apocalyptic stuff and I picked up this one here Annihilation um by Jeff Vandermeer um now this isn't a, a female author which kind of bugged me a little bit but I thought so when you read the back it basically says that you've got this area god what was it called area 12 some area 12 yeah um where uh, lots of exhibitions have um gone out to this and they haven't come back or they've come back mad or they've committed suicide um so they send a group of four women out an all-female expedition out to this area 12. so i thought it was going to be very kind of uh yeah female power and uh quite feminist in a way as well you know just thinking well you've got a, a sci-fi that's got a cast of just women and that's nice but i didn't like this book um it I, I felt like you didn't really get to know the characters. Even in the beginning, they basically don't tell you their names. They call them the botanist or the psychologist or the... It's all very impersonal. Um, you only really get to know one character, and I didn't particularly like her. Um, and I just... Ugh, I didn't find the story very interesting. So, whereas with Slow River, you've got such beautifully and the writing in slow river is beautiful this writing in here isn't um the, you've got such beautiful kind of rich characters this didn't and then i found the storyline really boring as well um so this was one of the few books this month that was really disappointing and i would give this two stars if that much um just wasn't interested do definitely don't want to read the rest of it yeah didn't like that so actually i didn't like every single book i read um and then the next one, and then I'm gonna kind of gonna cut it short on this one um, because I think I will do another video for the rest. Is uh, this book over here? So um, it is uh, a book for her by Chris, Bridget Christie, and Bridget Christie is a comedian. She's a feminist, and she does feminist comedy, and it is incredibly funny. Um, it made me laugh uh, a lot. Um, and she's very sarcastic, she talks about feminism in a really kind of real grassroots kind of way and it basically is a biography, it tells her story as well of, of going to the comedy clubs and that and I really giggled, I found it hilarious, um, three, three and a half stars it wasn't anything groundbreaking but it was funny so it was a good book so I'm gonna edit that for now um, and I'll do another one <laughs> but I'll speak to you guys soon, have a good day, bye bye